Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Thank you for your attendance uh, at this uh, discourse. Uh, inshallah, I will be sharing with you some of the experiments that we have done in United States which can be pertinent to your situation in this one in in Tokyo especially at the Assalam Foundation <coughs> so my thing is uh, what we are going to talk about the Islamic education for Muslim children in a Muslim minority situation, just like America or Japan or Europe or some, something of that kind of countries. So uh, what we do is uh, children are very busy, parents are very busy in, in, in the, in, in the non-Muslim countries. Uh, they hardly have time. Uh, so how to impart Islamic education to the children? Because they, they hardly have any exposure to the Islamic mahal and Islamic environment and so on and so forth. So, so we have made an arrangement that in the weekend they bring the, the people the students uh, to a school or madrasa or uh, to Islamic uh, center like this and then, then then we divide the children into first grade, second grade, third grade, fifth grade according to their age and then we give the Islamic instructions and things to them. Uh, and that has worked across uh, United States. We have about close to 1,000 Islamic weekend schools, maybe more, across the nation. The students come there for three hours in a week, on Sunday or Saturday, from 10 o'clock to 1 o'clock, and they study three subjects, Quranic studies, Arabic studies, and Islamic studies. So the idea is to impart education, the Islamic education to the children according to their age, age appropriate, and in all these three subjects. The Quranic studies deals with the Quran and Quranic teachings. Arabic studies deals with the learning of Quran, how to read, how to even write and how to understand some of the grammar, some of the vocabulary. And Islamic studies deals with uh, all the imaniyat, all the ibadat, all the mu'amalat, and all the akhlaqiyat. So we made a program for Islamic education to these children within this three hours in a week situation. And we are saying that holidays here and there, uh, summer holidays, Christmas holidays, they don't come to that one, so we give them. So we said that they, we want to bring the children for 30 weeks out of 52 to give that knowledge. Then, then we found out that there are, pro there are problems. We've been doing this from last uh, 20, 30 years. And it works. There are volunteers, teachers who come and teach. It works in a bigger cities where there are teachers, trained teachers, trained volunteers. There is a facility uh, for all 11 grades and things like that. But uh, what about people who are in remote areas and things? 
and that the books are not available, trained teachers are not available, timing is a problem. So then we come up with a program which is a web-based program where children don't have to leave their houses and the parents or the teachers are not there even though they they don't have the Islamic background or knowledge they don't have to be worried about that one because it will be available on the web in the form of lesson plans so what they and they don't have to worry about the books because the lesson plans will have all the material that has to be taught to the students. So we have been able to complete from first grade to fifth grade. And then I'm, and then we call this program as a Bible Elm. Uh, that's the chapter or door of knowledge is a unified resource for weekend Islamic school curricula development implementation and management. Purpose of this developing Bible end project is to provide a comprehensive structured Islamic curriculum from preschool through grade 11 to provide a conducive program for progressive learning of students. When you go, we see the student for first grade, for example, we give them A, B, C, D, that kind of initial introduction to, so for an English subject, or one, two, three, counting for mathematics and science, same thing. But then they go to second grade, <coughs> we give them advanced thing, and then the third grade, more advanced, there is a progression. But unfortunately, in Islamic studies, we have most of the books written for adults. And we give it to the child, and he can understand. Because his uh, comprehension level is not there, his vocabulary is not appropriate, then he cannot learn or she cannot learn. So for that one, we developed some books, we developed some curricula, we developed some lesson plans. And to provide a reference curriculum for teaching children in a weekend Islamic school setting. So what is Babel Elm? It's an internet portal that provides resources and tools for administrators and educators for starting implementation and management of weekend Islamic school curricula. For example, if you want to start Islamic school in this building for you know, for the students, so then you can divide them, okay, you go first grade here, second grade here, third grade here, you have, alhamdulillah, you have a good building here, then for three hours you gather them here, and then give education in three subjects, one subject, one hour, Islamic studies, Quranic studies, Arabic studies. Now, we don't have teachers, don't worry about it. We don't have books, don't worry about it, because we have prepared a program that you just go on the computer on the website and you print the lesson plan for that particular age first grade that particular subject islamic studies or quranic studies you take this one and you come to the classroom and you teach those things and it is a modular approach we don't want to cram too many things for children because then they get confused. So what modular approach is, we are going to give five to seven concepts, Islamic concepts, according to their age, appropriate for age, in one 45 minutes period. So for example, the, the student comes in first grade, five concept in Islamic studies, five in Quranic studies, five in Arabic studies. How many? 15 concepts in one week, right? That means, and, and then we are saying that, okay, you bring them for 30 weeks out of 52 weeks of the year. 
rest of the time you go vacation or, or whatever. So 15 times 30 is how many? 450 concepts in one year. Times 10, because they are going to be here for 10 years, because this is first grade, second grade, until the 10 years. So that means how many? 4,500 concepts that we want to give in such a way that it's not burdensome for the child. Five concepts in 45 minutes, right? But over a period of time, so we design it in such a way that the student, by the end of 10 years, will know how to read Quran, how to understand Quran with some vocabulary and some grammar, and and how and not understand but and he will get the whole concept what is the broad subjects and message in the Quran that's in Quranic studies then in Arabic studies he or she will learn how to read Quran or Arabic how to write Quran because we introduce writing because unless and until you write, you don't, you know, grasp the things. When you write it, you understand and you grasp the thing and you retain the things. And then you can understand Arabic. Then the Islamic studies, we, we start with all the Imania, six pillars of his Iman. Then we go all the Ibadat, five pillars of Ibadat. Then, but this is only 20% of the whole Islam. And unfortunately, in the whole Muslim world, we stop there. But then we tell them, okay, then we come into Mu'amalat, the relations and the conduction, conducting of relationships how to conduct with your parents, with your wife, with your children, with your neighbor, with your all this system, what's the Islamic political system, what is Islamic social system, what is Islamic uh, economic system, and how the marriage works, how the, uh, so all this Muhammad calls. Then they also cover akhlaqiyat, the morals, the manners, the etiquettes. Okay, what we have done historically is we said Islam is based on five pillars. Everybody knows, alhamdulillah, you know, the psalm, salat, zakat, hajj, and, and uh, testimony. But the whole Islamic structure, yes, it's based on five pillars but for that five pillar we only have five pillars in the building where is the foundation where is where are the walls where is the roof the foundation is iman the structure the walls your social system your economic system your political system your roof is your political system then what is akhlaqiyat? You, you have five pillars, you have foundation, you have walls, you have roof. But what is this roof, what is this doing here? This, this, this decorating is beautifying it. Right? This chandelier, the design, the way you have these things. This is akhlaqiyat. When you adorn your building, with akhlaq, with good manners, good etiquettes. When in America, a child, a son or a daughter addresses his son, addresses his father, hey John, hey mother, or addresses his uh, mother, hey Kathy, is it better or 
when a son addresses his father, Oh, Abu, Oh, Ammu, which is better? And it looks very small, but the etiquette brings the beautification in your life. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came to beautify the morals. He was the best of the characters, best of the manners. That manners we lost. The Adam we lost. That brings the beauty of it. How to conduct yourself in front of your parents, in front of your teachers, in front of your elders, with your wife, with your mother, with your father, with your children. That adab is so important that we lost that one. So we have to teach our children that adab. Then the whole building, the whole structure is there with pillars, the foundation, the roof, and the adornment into that one. So that's why we enter we have introduced this one. So what is Babel Elm? It's a, and that has to be an internet portal that provides resources and tools for administrators and, and all those kind of things. Through this website, we were and designed to provide a comprehensive online, on-site resource for implementing curricula that covers domains of Islamic studies, Quranic studies, and Arabic studies. Mission, what is our mission of Islamic studies? studies to cultivate the human mind and actions according to the instructions of Allah and the life of Prophet Muhammad and his companions that's our mission what do we what do we want we want to seek guidance from Quran and example of Prophet Muhammad that's and his companions so that's that's our mission why why is this because we now want to develop the curricula, instruction delivery, according to pedagogy, that means according to the vocabulary of that age, instruction time, time management. If we, if, uh, you know, if we give, for example, for a high school student, we said, okay, we are going to say Quran. Yes, Quran is such a big, the whole life is insufficient to study Quran. But we want to finish the, the big concepts, the message of Quran within four or five years of high school. How can we do that? Nobody has tried to do that. Because, you know, and our, you know, if we go with the tafsir, we don't have enough time. You know, tafsir, you know, one surah we might not be able to complete in four years, as, as had, had happened before. But then, after high school, the student is gone, we hardly get a chance to get in touch with Quran or Hadith or Islamic studies and things like that. So within this high school period, we want to introduce the student the whole concept of Quran, the whole theme of the Quran, the whole subject of the Quran. How can we do that one? So what we did was, uh, I'm jumping here here and there, so bear with me. So what we did, we divided the whole Quran in 125 lessons. Okay, 125 lessons and all 125 lessons will be covered from 6th grade to 11th grade. And each, grade, and each lesson, the model is modular, each lesson is not more than 5 to 7 concepts. We don't want to overwhelm everything, okay? Because in Quran, certain things, certain topics, certain themes are repeated, repeated, repeated. So we don't have to come back to that one. So once a child has a bird's eye view or an idea of what is in the Quran, the broad topics, what broad messages, then he can build upon that one in the rest of his life. But I can, I can guarantee you, 
Had I not written this book, this book, this is the whole Quran. This is the whole Quran. And this, I touched only an introduction to the contents of the Quran. I would have never, ever completed. I must have, you know, most of you have read the Quran for several times, but without understanding, without grasping what is in there. Yes, the sawab is there, alhamdulillah. Yes, you will get sawab from, from reading it, but what is in there? What it contains, what it is saying, what guidance it is providing, we're lost. Maybe some surah here, some surah there, we can tell. But as a whole in the Quran, we don't know. So we try to put all this together in 125 lessons and in Quranic study from 6th to 10th, 11th grade, we are giving that one. And each, and it's going to be on PowerPoint. Five concepts, six concepts in one lesson. It's, it's a very difficult job. It's easier for a Quran to explain in thousand volumes, and there are, there are Qurans in thousand volumes. But it's very difficult to concise the precise the Quran into 125 lessons. Nonetheless, we have taken this challenge and we are we are trying to do it. Inshallah, once it's completed, we will we'll put it on the website. So it would be much easier for people to grasp the whole main theme, main subject matter, main message of each surah. And that's it. That's one. Teachers, teachers, we don't have skilled teachers. We don't have teachers training. Parent involvement, very, very, very minimal. You know, I can relate to you one thing. There's one day we were teaching and I said the five times a prayer is obligatory on everybody and we should pray five times a day. And third grade child raised his hand. He said, yes, what do you want? What was your question? He said, you said that, you know, five times a day prayer is obligatory on everybody. Is it obligatory on parents also? Because he has not seen his parents praying. So that is what is ha happening in, in the, the finance, you know, like, for example, if you start a, a school here, for people to bring in here, taking them on time, and and it's, it, take, it takes time, and then all those kind of things. These are these are difficulties. So uh, I'm going to skip over all these things that we talked touched upon it. By the way, these things are on the website. I'm going to give you a live website. You can go on that one, and you can. Uh, get uh, some more details about it. The goals of our Islamic education. Uh, de develop Iman in children through education. Establish worship through the institution of five pillars of Islam. Build character on the Quranic foundation. Our characters are built from the tradition from where our parents have come. Sri Lanka, India, Senegal, America, Britain, wherever it is. The, our traditional, we are traditional Muslims from our culture. Our character is not built on Quran. As a matter of fact, that's what it should have been, that our character should have been built on the Quran how we can build on Quran. Then there will be unity. Because the culture in Senegal is different from India, from, from America to Japan. But Quran is the same. 
Quranic concept is the same. The character that Quran builds will unify us as a Muslim Ummah. That's what we fail. That's why we fight. That's why, that's why we, we don't agree with each other. Because there is no one reference point. We tell, we claim that, okay, Quran is our guidance and this and that, but we practice our culture, not the Quran, not the Islam. So that's what we want to bring the character uh, on the basis of Quran and provide role model from the seerah of Prophet Muhammad and his Sahaba. We follow Prophet Muhammad, but we do not, we cannot imitate him. He is a prophet, but we can imitate his Sahaba, his companions. So Prophet Sallallahu said that if you want to be guided, Follow any of my companions and you will be guided. So those are the guiding stars. Because we can claim that, okay, he, he was able to do it because he was prophet. I'm not a prophet, I'm a human being. I'm a simple Muslim. That's why prophet said, follow any of my companion and you will be guided. They were human beings, they were not prophets. We can relate to them, their experiences, their uh, educational level, their, their environment. We can relate to them and that's why Sahaba are the guiding stars for us. So, for example, our role model is at one time people were crazy about Beatles. At one time people and were crazy about Elvis Presley. Then Michael Jackson, the break dance, and this and that. Then our, our, our sports uh, champions, the football players. These are our role models for our, for our youth, right? No, 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 we are Muslims. Our role model is Sahaba. Okay, tell me. The names of Ashraf, uh, you know, Ashraf, um, Ashraf Mubashira. They were your role models. At least give me ten names of Ashraf Mubashira. We are lost. We don't know. We call it G I Joe. Garbage in, garbage out. If we want to imitate Michael Jackson, that's garbage in. We will tap dance like Michael Jackson it won't come out as a well-mannered American or Muslim kid. It will come out a good Michael Jackson imitation. Or for that matter, any person who is an actor in Bollywood or Hollywood or a football player, Michael Jordan or something like that. So, but we want a role model of the people who change the world. Who change the world. Our agenda is not less than changing the world. If you're thinking as a Muslim that we are not capable of it, so you might have better off not calling yourself Muslim. And I mean it. Our forefathers changed the world because they were the followers of Quran. They were living examples of Quran. They were followers, followers of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If we want to change the world, we got to go back to that one. There is no two ways about it. We cannot dance like a Michael Jackson and, and claim that I'm a practicing Muslim. I will change the world. Yes, you can change your style. You will walk like him, you will fight like him, and perhaps you are like him. But you don't want that one. You don't want your child to be that one. The goals, develop leadership with responsibility and accountability. Our leaders, whoever they are, Muslim leaders, the Muslim Ummah is in the mess because of our leaders. They are up for grab there. 
So they don't have any responsibility, they don't have any accountability, and that's why they're there. That's why we are in mess. So we want to create a leadership amongst the youth who will be accountable and responsible. And train for conducting mu'amilat with God consciousness. Okay, taqwa is very important. And they call it, you know, you may get away with different fatwas. Okay, you can do that one. Can I do that one? No, you can't do that. Okay, go to another mufti. Might he even give you a different fatwa and then I can get away with it. And that happens a lot. But if you have taqwa, God consciousness, accountability to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you, don't, you won't look for that one. So we want to create a youth who is conducting his dealings on taqwa, God consciousness, rather than getting away with kind, some kind of fatwa or anything like that. Then empowering, inculcate adab and akhlaq, manners for human dignity, decency, and equitability. Believe me, believe me, we lost the adab. We lost the etiquette. And we have, we have no, you know, we don't even know how to address each other. We don't know how to address our parents, our teachers. And, and that, that loses the real dignity in the society Muslim.